We'll now build up the form that will allow us to enter an email address and a message and then hit a send button. So to do this within Bootstrap, we can create a div with a class of row. This will allow us to create columns. And this is part of the Bootstrap grid system. If you're not familiar with a grid system, we essentially have 12 different columns and we can, for different device sizes, give a specific amount of columns. Now, in my case, what I'm going to do is create a six column on a medium width screen. So we can do this just here. So it's just a div with a class of col hyphen MD six. And I'm just going to enter form in here so we can just see what this looks like. So you can see here, it doesn't look too much different, but if we inspect this within the Chrome developer tools, you can see that this is now half the width. So it's six columns, obviously half of 12. But what I want to do is I want this whole thing to sit in the center. So to do this, I can actually offset it. So we just say col MD offset three. So now you'll see that that is now in the center. So the blue section is actually where that container is. Okay, so now that we have this, we can actually inside of here create a panel. So a panel just gives us this element, you can slightly perhaps see a border around here, but we can give this different uh, styles. And in my case, I'm just going to say panel default. So in here now we have this panel and you can see it's just slightly darker background, a little bit of drop shadow and border. Okay. So inside of here, then we want to say panel body, and then our form will go in here. So let's just preview this again and you can see all that's done is it's given a little bit of padding. So now let's build up our form. We have a form with an action going to a particular root. For now, I'm going to set this to hash because we don't know what that root is called. So we can't build this up. And the method is obviously going to be post. So let's just turn auto complete off as well. You don't really need to do this. And now we're going to create a class a div with a class of form group. And inside of here, we can create a label and an input. So the label here is going to be for email and we're going to say send to. And down here, we're going to have an input with a type of text. The name of this is going to be email and the ID is going to be email. In actual fact, we can set this to email. So we have some front end validation on this as well. So we need to give this a class so it looks nicer form control. And we're also going to set a placeholder in here as well. We can just say someone at domain.com just to give the user an example of what they should type in. So if we refresh, you can see that we've got a fairly nice looking form. It's just standard bootstrap styles, but it looks a lot nicer than what we would work with if we didn't have a framework pulled in. So all we need to do now then is outside of this form group, create a new form group, and this is for the message. So we say form group and inside of here, we create another label. This is for message. And in here we say message. And then down here, we create a text area. So the name of this is just going to be message. This is just how we pick it up with PHP. The ID is going to be message. The colds we can keep at 30 and the rows we can keep at 10. You can obviously adjust that or use CSS to change it. And that is pretty much it. We do need to remember our form control class as well. So it looks a bit nicer. So we now have this, we can just close this off. Okay. So now last but not least is our send button. So we just have a button here. We're going to give this a class of BTN. And then in here, we're going to say send. So this is just a bootstrap style button. When we refresh, we now have that. So we can type in an email here. Remember, because we're using some front end validation by setting the type to email, we get this popping up here, just telling us that we need to include a valid email. And then we can go ahead and write a message, hit send. At the moment, obviously it does nothing because we don't have a route defined to actually store the message, but we're going to be going on to do that a bit later. So we now have our form. We're almost ready to start submitting data 
through to our database and then firing off an email, but we don't actually have a database table set up. So let's jump over to the next part where we're going to set that up.